today we're gonna to be taking a look at what's in my cat photography bag. A lot of you probably don't know, outside of my freelance video projects and the YouTube channel here, I actually have a separate side business where I do cat portrait photography. Definitely a unique skill set and set of items to get that done, so I thought I'd show you kind of one by one all the items I choose to carry after a couple of years of experience on the job. So starting off with a few items outside of my main kit, a lot of my jobs I'm traveling for the distances or actually taking public transit so I have an external battery and phone charger just always good to make sure and have that on hand if you need it and then I also carry business cards with me always important to have a business card to give to a client or a potential client if you're out on the job so those are the only two things I really keep in the bottom there and then opening up the main compartment here I have my water bottle I'm usually out on pretty long days out on the job. This is just a one liter hydro flask. Love this thing. You guys hear me talk about it enough on the channel here. And then opening up to the main area. This is a newer purchase of mine I've had on the channel for a little while. It's a photography insert bag. It's fully waterproof, so it's really nice. You can use it with any bag and you're not gonna worry about your stuff getting rained on or wet or damaged or ruined. But it also allows you to use maybe some bags that are a little bit more fashionable or if you wanna swap out different bags on a more regular basis. I just love the versatility that a camera cube insert brings. So getting this unzipped here, I want to also mention that I'm using two cameras and two lenses to shoot this video, so this is not completely full. But typically I have my main camera here is the Sony a7 III. That's what I use essentially 100% of the time for all of my photos. I love it. It actually has an animal eye autofocus feature, so it'll track the eye even for animals. You know, it's been around for people for a lot, but it's a little bit of a newer feature for cameras for animals animal photography, so super, super helpful when they added that feature. And then above us here we have, it's the Sony A6400. I don't typically use it for my photography that often, but it's really important as a professional to have redundancy in gear. It's a big part of what people are paying you for to shoot things or events or people or animals. So in case this camera fails or breaks and I'm out on a job, I don't want to have to tell someone I can't do the job for them. So I have a backup camera just in in case. And then uh, the two lenses I have here, this is actually the Zeiss Battis 40mm lens. It's almost a macro lens with a really close focusing distance and with APS-C mode you have the option of 40 or 60 millimeters. This has been my new favorite lens to play with. And then above here we have the Zeiss Battis 25mm lens. Because it's on the APS-C camera, it's right at about 37 millimeters right now, but really good for wide angle, tight spaces. Uh, depending on the shot, that's my least used lens lens for cat photography, but I always like to bring it because I never know what people's houses are going to be like, so you have to be prepared for a pretty big array of things. And then last but not least, this is my OG cat photography lens, my absolute favorite, and this is the Zeiss Battis 1.885, uh, super, super great fast autofocus super sharp, uh, 85 is just like a dreamy focal length for portraits. This has been what I've used for like 75% of my cat photography career. I do love this 85. So those are the three lenses and the two cameras I bring with me. Um, you know, kind of the meat and potatoes of the job. And there's not gonna be a ton of other camera gear in here. A lot of it's more cat related things because the key with cat photography is, you know, less is more. If you bring in big lights and big heavy gear and, you know, all this hubbub, the cat's not going to act like themselves. So to kind of get that natural, fun, playful attitude that they normally have, uh, I like to try and be as discreet as possible. Essentially, I'm just like playing with cats and getting paid for it. It's great. Um, but outside of that, in case you know you have a shy cat that's hanging out under something, um, I do like to bring a light with me in case I can't get them out of a certain area or just in a really dark home. Uh, this is the Aperture ALMW. I bought this a while back. It's super bright. It's actually fully waterproof as well. Um, not that relevant for this application, but I use it for video a lot too. I uh, love this. This little thing. It's um, it's not a bicolor, but you do get gels and a few other diffusion options. Um, it's come in handy and saved me at probably six to ten houses over the last year and a half. So 
definitely an important part of the kit. And uh, outside of that, for camera gear, I just have this little pouch here with extra memory cards and batteries. Again, redundancy is key for any sort of professional creative work. Um, you know, they're paying you to do the job no matter what. So keep that in mind. And then this other pouch here, I just have some microfiber cloths. Always gotta clean the lenses before you start. Um, and then moving on to some of the cat things, I always bring some treats with me. Um, usually with my paid clients, I do about half volunteer work, half paid clients. Um, so my paid clients, they do usually get a bigger, fancier package of uh, cat treats to take with them. But I do also have uh, these little sample Mud Bay cat treats. If anyone's in the Pacific Northwest, Mud Bay is a local chain out here, super great company. But um, yeah, so I have a couple of cat treats. It's a great way to get them familiarized with you. And then a couple of little toys. Um, cats love these springs. I got them in like a 60 pack on Amazon for less than 10 bucks or something. Every single cat I ever encounter just loves these. Uh, and then this is just a little paper thing I got, which people don't love that one as much, but those springs are just pure gold. And on the note of other toys, this is a little bit too big to fit into the insert, but I have this uh, wand toy that I just broke on camera. Let me just put that back. I'll just worry about it later. Cats love the wand toys. This is a uh, demouse. It's a whole brand of different, they have a mouse and a bird and a bee and all that sort of stuff. They're all handmade in Michigan actually. Really uh, nice to see, you know, some local manufacturing to my hometown. Let me put that back here. Uh, so that's it for the toys, the treats, and last but not least, we have a few kind of special <laughs> concoctions and oils that I like to bring with me and use. Uh, this is catnip essential oil. You know, definitely a crowd favorite. You can spray it on toys or I'll, I'll spray it on myself sometimes if I want them to get close to me or I'll spray them in a certain area I want to direct them to. Uh, really, really handy when you're out there. And uh, this is honeysuckle spray. Very similar to catnip spray, but this usually works for cats that aren't sensitive to catnip. Moving on to, you know, you have your uppers and then uh, your downers. This is a fell away spray. I learned about this from my cat's cat sitter. Yep, I have a cat sitter. And there's actually quite a few in Portland. We're a big animal town here. But, um, but yeah, this is like a calming spray. Really great if you have to take your cat to the vet or if you have a really stressed out cat, which can definitely happen, you know, with me being a stranger to a lot of these cats. This is a great way to be able to calm them down if you need. And uh, last but not least, the most fun out of the bottles here. These are catnip bubbles. Uh, I've been trying more and more to take some photos with these. I just love the idea of like a bunch of bubbles in the foreground. I've gotten a few good shots over the last uh, several months, but some cats are really scared of these and some cats absolutely love it. Like I said, I like to really keep an extremely lightweight setup for my cat photography gigs. Um, super important not to impose on their space. And I'm sure the non-cat people, if you are watching this by chance, are probably very confused. But if you wanna learn more about cat photography for yourself at home with your cats, uh, I made a video a couple years ago with some cat tips called Cat Photography 101. Check that out. Check out my Instagram handle is Candid Kitten for all of my cat photography. Uh, my cat's Instagram is Wolfie the British Short Hair. I'll link both of those below. Um, you can check out Wolfie actually has merch if you want to help support me and the cat photography business. Uh, Wolfie has merch on his website, uh, CandidKitten.com. So check that out. But uh, thank you guys all so much for watching. Let me know if you want to see more cat related content on here. I've been toying with the idea of starting a separate channel for it because I don't really show this side of myself that often on the main YouTube channel just for the sake of not confusing everyone, but I love cats. I love cat photography. Uh, it's been a very fun venture over the last couple of years, so I'd love to uh, discuss it further in the comments, but thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.